Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great today. Okay, so here I am about to fulfill my promise to you that I was going to do a video on the opening ceremony at the Commonwealth Games and the bull and the bow worship and all the stuff that happened there. So here it is. I want you to sit back, relax and enjoy the ride with me. But before you sit back and grab your popcorn, I want you to please remember to subscribe to our channel and also click on the notification button so that uh, whenever we upload a new video, you will be notified. Um, just for starters, I think we need to understand what the Commonwealth Games is all about, what the whole idea of Commonwealth is all about as well. The very first Commonwealth Games was held in Hamilton, Ontario in 1930 and was actually called the British Empire Games. Commonwealth nations are about 56 in number, a total of about 2.5 billion in population. These nations may have declared independence at some point in their history, but they are really not independent because their allegiance is still to the British crown. They are still under the influence of the British crown. So that's basically what Commonwealth of Nations is all about. They are nations that are controlled by Britain, by the colonial powers. And so every four years, they come together to have these games that they call Commonwealth Games. And they, it's like a mini Olympic Games. The reason this year's one is trending so much is because of the things that happened at the opening ceremony. Remember, some weeks ago, I put out a video to let us know that the Large Hadron Collider at CERN was now being restarted and eventually got restarted. I told us clearly that restarting that collider meant that the gates of hell were opening onto our world and demons were about to be poured into this world in measures that we have never seen before in the history of this world. So it's not a coincidence that not too long after CERN Large Hadron Collider was restarted, we are seeing an opening ceremony depicting the worship of Baal in plain sight. But you know, everybody talks about Baal, Baal, Baal because you saw the bull that came out. They call it the raging bull that came out at that ceremony. And that became the star of the show. But that was not the only thing that happened on that day. And this is why I want you to follow me carefully. I want to show you something else that happened in that same place that many people are not taking notice of. And it's all interconnected with the emergence of the bull, which also has its own implications, which I'm going to explain to you as we go further down. The stadium itself is filling with smoke. The smell of the smoke is in the nostrils of the 30,000 inside the stadium. If you compare the image of this building that is up in flames here with the one that is on the other side of the screen, which is the image of the Tower of Babel, you can see that they have too many similarities. Now, what I consider this that is up in flames is the Tower of Babel. This is a depiction of how God confused the language and destroyed the Tower of Babel. And before we continue with this image, I want to share with you what I believe was the idea behind the Tower of Babel. Because, you know, in Christianity, we've been told that the Tower of Babel was being constructed to get to the heavens where God is living. But I don't believe that that is actually what it meant in literal sense. I don't think it is possible for anybody to construct any structure that will get into the heavens. I'm pretty sure that back in the days, they didn't have the power for it. Today, we still don't have the power to do that. But you know that whenever something is stretched into the skies, that back in the days, the olden days, they would say it went up into the heavens. The skies are also called the heavens. So skyscrapers are buildings that have stretched into the heavens. So I believe that this was supposed to be an imposing structure that was going to be a skyscraper that was stretch into the heavens and take the shape of a pyramid. And ideologically, what that simply means is that these people were actually trying to build the center for one world government, one world religion, one world currency, one world everything. Just call it the new world order. There was the devil trying to establish 
his own rule or reign over the earth. And God went and scattered the language over there and frustrated the tokens of these liars. And so it never happened. And when God frustrated it, they went back to the drawing board and then began to craft the same thing that God destroyed until they came up with what you call Illuminati today. And once they created Illuminati, the same pyramid... The same pyramid that this Tower of Babel looks like has now become a symbol that many of us are all too familiar with today as the symbol of the Illuminati. And that symbol, unlike the Tower of Babel that didn't have a capstone, the pyramid that they have today now has a capstone, which means that the capstone which bears the eye of Lucifer is now the completion of that same thing they wanted to do there. So even though God frustrated it, even though God didn't allow it to happen, it has now finally come to conclusion. And so what they are doing in this time is giving us announcements of how they are emerging gradually into our psyche, into our existence as human beings, which actually tells you that we are living in the end of all things as you know it. That's what is going on right here. And so with that knowledge, I want us to go right back into the video that I was showing you so that I can tell you how that this video, even though they know that there was a library that was gutted with fire in 1879, which was rebuilt in 1882, they are using that same history to pass across a subliminal message that means that the Tower of Babel is back again. One world religion and one world government, the new world order has now come back. But you are also going to understand what is it that has given life to this evil thing that God frustrated many, many, many years ago. Now look at the fire in front of you. You will see that there are people called the dreamers. There are actually more than six in number, but there are only six here. Now, why do we have only six? Six is a number of man's weakness. It's a number of man's depravity. It's a number of rebellion. That's why the pride LGBT color is six in number. Many people think that their flag or their color is rainbow. No, rainbow is seven colors, but the LGBT pride color is six in number. Remember, man's weaknesses, man's depravity, and man's rebellion. So that's what six stands for. And six also, when you put it in three places, it gives you the mark of the beast. So six means a lot to the devil. Now watch what happens in this video as six dreamers come together and they are holding what you call shirts, crystal shirts. And crystals, for those of you who may not know, are just like gemstones, but for some reason, they have low vibrational energies. These dark powers operate with low vibrational energies. So they are very much attracted to crystals. So if you look at mysticism all over the world, if you talk about occultism, you will hear a lot of crystal-related terminologies or activities or, or rituals and stuff like that. So that's why in their hands, you see them bearing crystals. They call them crystal shards. These crystal shards are glowing with light. What light is in these shards? The light they carry is the light of Lucifer, which is the light that is going to lead and rule everything on earth under the reign of the Antichrist. Remember, Lucifer is depicted as the light giver. That's why if you look at the Columbia picture, it is a woman carrying the torchlight. That's the light of Lucifer. If you look at the Statue of Liberty, which actually has nothing to do with liberty, it's actually carrying another light again, and that's the light of Lucifer. The Olympic torchlight, all representing the light of Lucifer. That same light today has now been infused into a crystal shard, and I want you to see what they are going to use that light to do with this burning structure in front of you. Just watch, but before you see them use the shirt to restore the building that is burning, I want you to look at something that many people have not seen. Watch, right there. Did you see something they just changed now? Did you see that what is in front of you in this very compartment here is actually a figurine, like a mask. 
Just watch again. The image begins to come and then the yellow light disappears and turns into a static image. What, do you see that? Do you see that emerging? As it's disappearing, it kind of morphs into an image of a being that is sticking the tongue out, which I believe here looks like Lucifer or Satan himself in the flames. And they are feeling at home in this flame. Was this what the Tower of Babel was meant to accomplish? To become like an embassy for the powers of hell? So that hell is established on earth. Isn't that what the whole New World Order agenda is all about? To bring the kingdom of Satan into our world. They got frustrated it. But now they are revamping it. They are giving it a new life. How did they give it life? The light of Lucifer is what they put together and then they were able to restore, as you can see in front of you. But why didn't they just aim it individually at that? They had to put it together because when the Tower of Babel was destroyed, it was because they had one voice. That's why they were succeeding in what they were doing. Because scattered their tongues. And today they've taken all those crystal shards, almost like representing tongues, and they have put them together as one. They could have aimed it at the building individually and accomplished the same thing. But he said, no, let's put it as one because that oneness that we lost was why we lost our hold on the universe, on the population of the world, when he came and scattered our tongues. So they're showing you that all these nations, our voices are one. We are now recreating the worship of Baal in this present age. We are running away from that God who made the heavens and earth. We are deviating from our moral and Christian principles and codes that we all grew up with. It is now the era of the worship of Satan and not the worship of God. That's what they just told you right there. And so a new life has been given to the tower of Babel and suddenly we now see all the dreamers holding the same together. So those tongues of six that became one is now the tongues of all the nations. We are now speaking with one voice to say that we want Satan to come back and rule over the nations of the earth. And that's why the song that was performed there is titled, Hear My Voice. Hear my voice round about the tower of Babel, which represents one world religion new world order born and displayed in front of us in plain sight it's got nothing to do with the library the library doesn't look this way this right here is the birth of the new world order the reign of the antichrist but let's go further maybe we'll be able to connect the dots more perfectly than you have already seen <laughs> A terrifying sight. Before I take you to this image, which I know most of you must have seen, which is the image of the bull entering and looking very angry and stuff like that, I want us to go to a few things that has happened before now. There was a precedent. There was a preparation for this that nobody is talking about. And I'm going to take you to see how they laid the foundation for what took place at the opening ceremony of the Birmingham Games, where they introduced the bull that the children of Israel were sacrificing their children to in front of the whole world. During America's departure from God, an image was set up in New York City in the heart of its financial section, the place devoted to gain. It was this. You can put that up. In the Bible, an image of a molten bull was an image of Baal. And it was linked, whether bull or calf, was linked to the departure of a nation from God. To represent a nation's prosperity, America's financial power, gain, increase, which was also a symbol, was linked to Baal, a nation turning away from God. America has had this modern image for so many years. This symbol was already there in New York. The symbol of the bull. The same Baal worship. The symbol of pride. America's economic might, America's affluence. We, we don't need God anymore. The worship of the devil, the killing of children. As you'll find out later on, you'll find out that New York City in the whole of the US, if not the whole world, 
is the headquarters of child sacrifices to Baal because that's the headquarter of the Planned Parenthood. That's where these guys are. This is where they began to make it legal for people to kill children. What is Baal known for? Baal is known for child sacrifices. Let me play you a video to help you understand how they were worshipping Baal in those days. This group of deities were always connected with the idea of fertility. And it was extraordinarily gruesome in their practices. And one of the things, for instance, that they would do whenever there was indeed a concern about their future prosperity, the ability to feed themselves, they would sometimes take their firstborn children and in the worship of Baal, um, they would go forth and burn these children al alive. And, and while these children were screaming in agony, these folks would engage in all kinds of sexual perverse acts during this time of worship. Can, can you believe what you just heard? They would take their children to sacrifice them to Baal. And then they throw the children into the fire. And while the children are screaming and burning alive, the parents will engage in so many sexual activities that are very perverse. This is the origin of sexual perversion. When a man is not doing it with the person he's supposed to do it, when a woman is not doing it with the person she's supposed to do it, that's perversion of sex. That is a form of satanic worship to Baal. This is what they were doing while the kids were burning. In the autumn of 2016, the sign of Baal appeared in New York City. I went down there for the unveiling of this unholy object, the Arch of Baal. And we actually showed it to you, we'll show you a little clip of them unveiling it to Middle Eastern music with, with the leaders of uh, New York City praising this thing. This, it was the Arch of Baal, a reproduction from the Middle East or of the Middle Eastern Arch that led the worshipers of Baal into the Temple of Baal. And again, this is the, the worship that involved the offering up of children. It is the sign of a nation that has fallen from its God. And now it appeared in America. And where? In New York City, the center of abortion. We have offered up over 60 million children in abortion. We have turned to the spirit of Baal. We have followed the God of prosperity, of power, of apostasy, of sexual immorality. So as you can see now, Baal worship or Baal worship as my Western brothers would say, is associated with apostasy. It's associated with deviating away from the ways of God and now walking in the ways of Satan and idol worship. When a nation is about to turn their backs on God, the thing they face is Baal worship. That's what is going on. So for those of you who are just following the trend of what happened at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games, you need to know when this whole thing started. He's talking about 2016. They unveiled the symbol of Baal worship of the Temple of Baal. Wherever this arch, this symbol is established, it means that the spirit and the energy that goes with the temple of Baal is present in that place. So when you look at the arch, you're looking at the temple of Baal. This temple of Baal was in the city of Palmyra in Syria. That was where the ancient temple was. It was in ruins, but it was kept there. And so when ISIS fighters went, destroyed it when they were fighting with Syria and they destroyed that, the Western powers, America, UK, in fact, started by the United Kingdom, said that they want to have it in all the major cities of this world. So they don't want to have the tomb of Christ that rose from the dead or the Bible or any other holy, holy representation, but they want to have the arch that represents child sacrifices erected in every major city in the world. Boris Johnson was the one who led the unveiling of the arch in England, even before the one that Jonathan Khan is talking about went up in New York City. We're here today in solidarity with the people of Syria who are here in the spirit of defiance, defiance of the barbarians, 
who destroyed the original of this arch as they've destroyed so many other monuments. And I hereby unveil the oldest new structure in the history of this city. Ladies and gentlemen, the Triumphal Arch of Palmyra. Three, two, one. Of all the things you want to come into solidarity with the people of Syria to rebuild, it is the arch that leads into the temple of Baal where babies were sacrificed in the olden days. Do you know they actually wanted to call it the temple of Baal? And there was a lot of pushback from people. People were wondering, why would you just put something like this and call it its original name, knowing that this was where child sacrifices took place? And that was when they now accepted to call it the Arch of Palmyra. It was going to be called its original name. These blood suckers know what they're doing. So for those of you who are pouring over what happened, uh, the, uh, the Commonwealth Games. This is where it began. Way back in 2016, the same year, in keeping with their promises, they took it to America. It landed in New York City, and then the next place is D.C., Washington, D.C. In the paradigm, it mentioned two cities. I mentioned two cities linked to bail or abortion. One was New York City, and the other is Washington, D.C. See, these are the two capitals of Planned Parenthood. And it's also the one, New York, is where abortion was spearheaded for the nation, and Washington is where abortion was made the law of the land through the Supreme Court. The Arch of Baal is now being set up in Washington, D.C. The arch that is linked to the killing of children. So, as you can see, in that same year, they had the arch set up in England. And they also had the arch set up in New York City. And they took it to Washington, D.C. And I'm pretty sure it's going around to all the major cities. The arch that leads to the temple where children were sacrificed, murdered something that God hated so much. Judges chapter 3, verse 7. Judges chapter 10, verse 6. 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 30 to 33. When Ahab made the bow worship so popular, married a woman who was so wicked, and more than any other king, he provoked God. And bow worship became the state religion under Ahab. You go to 2 Kings chapter 10, verses 18 to 29, you see how much God hates this. Jehu gathered all of them in one place, and he killed all these people. That's how much God hates bow worship. Elijah challenged about 450 bow worshippers and 400 of Asherah worshippers. Because wherever there was a bow temple, there was an Asherah pole. Asherah pole is almost like a, a tall tree that they plant beside it that represents Asherah, the mother goddess, who is said to have given birth to 70 different gods, including Baal. So Asherah is the woman that gave birth to Baal. She's the mother of Baal. So you can see that this is the queen of darkness. So the bull is showing up because his house is already there spiritually. The arch represents the temple of Baal and is already gone up in England 2016. And in 2022, six whole years, the guy, six, six again, six years, the bull himself now shows up. And I just read that they are planning not to just put it in a public place. They are going to put him, let me use him the way they call him, him. They are going to put him in a closed place, like in a temple, in a house. They want to build a house for him. <laughs> Doesn't that make sense now? That's where it all started from. The Arch of Palmyra. So you can start looking it up all over the internet. You will see where they have been established, popping up. They represent the Temple of Ba. While this Ba himself has just shown up today, his temple was already established and erected before the image of the Ba showed up in 2022. Let me take you to that opening ceremony, the entrance of the Baal, and what happened so you can understand better 
some of the things you probably haven't heard before. I want to show it to you now and explain to you what really went down at that ceremony.